In this part of the tutorial, we're actually going to be using the cylinders that we created from the last part and assemble what the effect will look like, more or less, in the final output. So we have the cylinder and the material that we applied, but this is the material that I already had set up from beforehand. So we'll go ahead and actually create the new materials that we'll need. So let's create a new material, call it Additive Texture Distortion 1, I guess and set the material or set the shader to whatever we created early on. And this is already set up for us by default based on the shader inputs. So we're just gonna make the color much brighter and then we'll apply it to this cylinder by going into Pro Builder's Material Editor, dragging this in right here and setting that as the material to use. So right now the distortion is way too high. So let's turn that down. Let's turn up the, the tiling on the texture a bit more, maybe to like four and two. And then let's stretch the cylinder to be two units high and also ground it to zero like that. Right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's make this like blue or something. Lightish blue like that. We can turn up the distortion a tiny bit. So we get this effect and we'll create a new game object that'll be the warp tunnels parent so we can put in more inside of it we'll drag this cylinder in we'll call this cylinder small cylinder outer and we'll duplicate it and basically reverse the normals so that it points inwards and that that way we have the inner part of this effect so small cylinder inner and this is what we have so far then we'll duplicate this first one, and, or actually not the first one, the, the second one, and we'll call this large cylinder inner. And also maybe large cylinder inner two. And then we'll just duplicate or stretch the Y out to maybe four units on both of these, right? So we're starting to get a really cool effect right here. Let's see what that looks like from the inside. And for this next one, we'll, we'll just change up the color. But if we change up the color now, it's going to affect the entire, entire effect because we're using the same material. So we'll need another different material. We'll call this Distortion 2. Maybe make this one orange or something. And then go to the Material Editor. And set the second distortion. One right like that. And also the inner needs to share the same one because they overlap. Unless, of course, we give this one yet another one, but so we'll give this one two, and then we'll create another third one like that. And we'll give this one the third one. We can also stretch it differently, maybe stretch it out even more. Okay, so we have this, we have three shaders now. One on these two, another one on this one, another one on this one. So if we make this like purple, that should show through. Right, let's make it actually this color. Change up the distortion to be much higher. This one, let's change up the speed, the scrolling on the distortion to be different. And we get that, right? So I think that looks pretty cool on its own. Let's just see. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So, I mean, obviously you can tweak this to look more like the original warp tunnel we have, but that is basically almost the same thing. It's basically the difference between, you know, scaling and the material configurations, which I can show you right here. So this one's five units high, this one's also five units, but it's got different uh, settings for the noise speed, which makes them not overlap. In this one, we accomplish the same thing by just scaling the, la the last two to different scales. We can also maybe change the scale of this to be different as well, right? So we get this effect. And again, same thing, you can stretch it out the whole effect at once, no problem to make whatever sort of variation you want. So yeah, that concludes that part.